All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, good, good afternoon. afternoon. All. My, My name, name is Prakash, Prakash Bodla, and I'm the Managing Director for Cadet Technologies, Technologies India Limited. Twenty twenty, two thousand twenty, and uh, recently there was a, a, a divestment. As a result, uh, Kerala has actually become a publicly traded organization. But for over a century, uh, we have been developing innovative products and services that have changed the way uh, people live and work. And at Kerala, our uh, vision is very simple: uh, creating products and solutions that matter the most for our planet and our people. And that's it, right? And uh, that, that is what, what we had actually been heavily focused upon. And a major part of our organization in India uh, is actually a GCC, uh, where we are actually having this uh, Economic Times uh, uh, All India Summit. And uh, this GCC was established in Hyderabad about uh, 20 years ago. And what we do out of uh, this particular GCC is primarily focusing on the software embedded, basically like the brains behind the system, for all, all of the, the carrier products. products. And, and that is what we had actually been working over the last 20 years and established, established this to be the center of excellence for all of our carrier products, products in the areas of the software and the embedded systems, including the automation and the testing. Uh, in Hyderabad, apart from the R&D, we also have a digital and a business solutions function uh, here in Hyderabad as well. But before we actually get started on this innovation, uh, the topic that's very, very close to my heart, and I'm very keen on, on, on the topic of the innovation. I just wanted to highlight some key facts. Did you know that uh, only 50% of the current S&P 500 companies are going to be remaining on the list in the next 10 years, or 50% of the companies are not even going to be there uh, in the S&P 500 in the next 10 years? Or 50% of the, of the job that, that we are currently doing are going to be replaced in the next 10 years. I mean, think about that. I mean, the companies that we are talking about uh, are not small. They are veterans in their own vertical. So why is that they cease to be on the list over the next 10 years? I mean, they could have been on the list over the last 20 or 30 or 40 years, but then they are ceasing to exist on the list. One strong possibility is because of the rapidly evolving changes including the pandemics like uh, the COVID that we have recently seen, or the technology disruptions, or change in the customer preferences, or overlapping vertical markets. When we talk about the overlapping vertical markets, I mean, take a look into who would have assumed that a smartphone could be a competition for a standard photography equipment like the Kodak, right? I think these are the overlapping vertical markets that are actually now happening, along with the regulatory changes, along with the macroeconomic a uh, kind of uh, the, the dynamics, dynamics that are actually, actually happening, that could be the war, that could be the inflation, that could be the recession, stagflation, whatever you would be talking about. But whatever that might be, one of the ways that the companies can continue to outperform is innovate, is the innovation, is continue to disrupt themselves. The, there is an old saying, right? I mean, either you disrupt or you get disrupted. It's as simple as that part, right? India currently has over 7,000 R&D institutions and is ranked on the 48th in the Global Innovation Index. But when it comes to the GCCs, we currently have about 1,400 GCCs operating out of India, and of course 60% of them or 65% of them are actually the US-based GCCs operating out of India. And almost all of these GCCs have actually started with providing basic operational support to their parent organization. And slowly transforming into strategic transformation CVOEs hubs and start to take on the innovation initiatives. But one of the things that is also actually kind of accelerating as to why the GCC needs to be really innovating and disrupting themselves is because, for example, if you take a look into the current situation, the great year of the resignation, what the great year of the resignation is actually doing is increasing that increasing the talent was increasing the cost inflations, which means that the previous cost advantage that we used to have for the parent organization does not uh, exist anymore. Uh, it is uh, ceasing to exist, which means that our GCC needs to be innovating and this needs to become as an imperative for their DNA, how they actually operate going forward. 
But the good news is that the MNCs have also gradually converted their GCSEs into innovation hubs, expanding their existing facilities and creating new centers of excellence. And one of the beauties with the GCSEs that we have in India is that the cost of experimentation or the cost of taking the risk is extremely low. Uh, unlike maybe other regions or other centers or other uh, facilities, which is also encouraging the MNCs to be actually doing more skunk, the Indian word jugad out of uh, India. One of the things that we also need to talk about is that all these GCCs are now maturing uh, towards their innovation journey. I mean, if you really take a look at from a maturity standpoint, just like the CMMI, uh, CMMI model, I would call uh, that to be in a, a file level, right? I mean, this is uh, just my uh, my way of uh, identifying how mature are these GCCs. And level zero is where there is no risk and there is no innovation, work as usual, status quo, just get the things done. I mean, whatever is the parent organization asking us to do, just get the things done and just move on. It's more like bits and pieces of work. Level one is uh, innovation is happening, but it's more sporadic. A few individuals are excited and they want to do something on the newer technology, disrupt their particular program or one of their product lines, etc. But there is no specific agenda or no specific goals from the corporate. And the, the key outcomes from their innovations or their scum work is actually not really measured and there is no KPI. Level two is a little more advanced where there is a little more structure to the process in innovation and there are funds allocated by the parent organizations and uh, either that could be the funds or the resources and that's serious about it. But uh, this may not be across the entire organization, but maybe few uh, few businesses or a few programs or few teams. Uh, level three is companies behind this initiative and there is a defined structure, uh, at least in some of the businesses, the big businesses that they currently have. And it has a clear view in terms of what uh, it wants uh, out of these innovation hubs or the COEs that they are actually creating. And then they also have a pipeline of the technologies and the programs that they are actually investing in. Uh, they have a clear cut KPIs as well in terms of what uh, will define a success to be looking like. And eventually the level four, which is the highest, has a great portfolio of the products, can showcase to the customers, can talk about the innovation that they are doing, how they are disrupting the overall business, how they are disrupting the market. They can show the value proposition of the work that they are actually doing. And then most importantly, it is repeatable. Most importantly, it is scalable. Most importantly, the knowledge is transferable. Most importantly, it is a culture that they have actually made within this organization. And the cultural aspect that we are talking about is extremely important because until and unless we have the right culture, we are not in a position to create a GCC transforming into an innovation hub. I mean, Peter Drucker has a famous saying, right? It uh, says that you can have the greatest of the strategies, but the whole problem is that, uh, you know, the culture can eat uh, your strategy for lunch or breakfast or dinner, right? I mean, so how much of it you can strategize, how much of it you can actually do it until and unless you have the right culture in the organization, you will not be in a position. I mean, the GCC will not be in a position to actually get on to the next step. But, but the, the beauty, beauty in this one is that, that out of the 1,400 GCCs that I'm talking about, most of the GCCs, about 50 to 60 percent of the GCCs are in level two or the level three kind of bordering between level two, level three, which is actually a fantastic journey to say that these GCCs are transforming quickly, moving from left to the right from their maturity standpoint. Now, now that you know the maturity levels, let's actually just double click to find out why this is actually happening or what might be the parameters that might be contributing why a GCC is in a specific level that it, that it is in. I mean, uh, there are some standard answers that actually says that probably it could be because the GCC got, just got established like yesterday or like last year or two years ago, or they're still defining uh, what the charter for the GCC has to be. I mean, leaving those things aside uh, for the mature GCCs, probably I will classify this into three layers. One is the internal layer. Uh, that, that is, is your, you, you as a GCC leader or, or your own team. team. And, and what, what kind of a risk appetite is there with the you or the leadership uh, that, that you have? Uh, how much do you really want to disrupt or do you want to just maintain the status quo? Um, what is the team structure? What is the reporting structure? Uh, do you have a voice on the table? Uh, what is the diversity that you have on the table? Is it exactly the similar kind of people from a similar kind of universities that you have been hiring? Or, or you, you have, have a wide, wide variety and wide diversity within the organization from various verticals, various industries that are actually now will be in a position to bring their knowledge and wisdom 
to disrupt the products that you're actually uh, working upon. And the support from the eventually from the management in terms of what are the KPIs that the management is actually telling you from the resources or the funding or the allocation or the freedom that they're actually giving you. So these are all the internal mechanisms at the GCC that will define the maturity. But now let's actually take it at uh, one higher level, at a corporate level. Uh, what is the top management push for the innovation? How risk appetite or how risk averse is the overall organization, right? Um, how are the companies actually allocating the funds for our local GCCs? Uh, what is the kind of the culture that the organization have across the entire uh, company, not just at the GCC, but the overall organization? Uh, how are they celebrating the innovations, not just celebrating the successes, but the celebrating the failures as well? Right. right. One, One of the key, key things, things that, that are also, also between the individual or the local teams and uh, with the corporate. One thing that I would also say is that if you are trying to lead the innovation charter within the GCCs, you need to think more like a startup company. You need to think more like uh, a venture capitalist. Don't worry saying that whatever are the ideas that we are actually working on are all going to be successful. Just like the venture capitalists, they think that, uh, you know, I'm going to be investing in about 100 different companies. With, with the, the intent, intent that only 5 or 10% or 10 of those companies are eventually going to be successful, and, and uh, we are going to be focusing on those 5 or 10% rather than, than focusing on the 90% that have actually failed or not succeeded, and kind of feeling bad about it, right? So, so what, which side of the equation are you uh, including the leadership? I think those are the important things, along with uh, how do you incentivize for the people who are being innovative? I mean, do you really write? in their yeah, annual, annual appraisal, appraisal process, process to say that, hey, you know what, what? this person actually worked on like 10 different skunk ideas to disrupt my current product line that has been in existence for over the last 20 years, years right? But, but they, they have, have not come out with any idea, but in spite of that, I'm going to be recognizing this uh, individual, he or she, uh, for the step that they have taken. The third layer, I would call it to be more external, right? This is kind of the government stability, government incentives, so for specifically the innovation and the R&D. Uh, that, uh, that could, could be including, including the special economic zone kind, kind, kind of incentives that the government is actually doing. What kind of universities are around you? Or how many universities are around you? How many startup companies are, are around you? And how is the competition looking at the GCCs, right? Uh, GCCs are all playing in their own vertical, but we can also use the GCCs to benchmark against each other in terms of the innovation index. And hey, you know what? I know about this particular GCC that is around the corner. That are, that are doing, doing this fantastic, fantastic job, job. Are, are there, there any best practices, practices that I would be in a position to actually take it? This is my external parameter, but I would be in a position to actually rub against the shoulder of the other GCC and learn something good into my organization. So those are some fundamental things in a three-layered approach in terms of you at an individual level, at corporate level, and an external parameters that actually kind of decides your maturity or how fast you can actually progress in the maturity curve. But, but as, as the GCCs, GCCs are progressing from the left, shifting, shifting from, from the left to the right, there are some pitfalls that the GCCs uh, should avoid while starting this uh, innovation journey. One is that uh, before they actually get upon this uh, innovation journey, uh, one thing that's extremely important is that they need to have a strong executive sponsorship right from the top. I mean, you can actually start uh, some kind of a skunk and an R&D from internally. But, but until and unless you want to, to uh, take, take it to the, the higher levels, levels in terms of uh, the scalability and uh, repeatability year over year and making sure that you have that kind of a culture within the GCC, you need to have a blessing from the top, right? So, so make sure that, uh, you know, the leaders on this call that could be managers, that could be senior leadership, make sure that you have a proper alignment with the executive sponsors uh, and that could be the vice president, that could be your boss in the US, that could be anybody who really encourages this kind of a behavior, uh, seriously encourages this kind of a culture within the organization. Once that is over, then we need to have a dedicated funds and resources. I mean, the last of the things that you want is that uh, somebody is working on a long shot, moon shot uh, kind of a program and uh, poof, uh, there is a Q3 is uh, extremely tough and the funds get, uh, uh, you know, uh, reduced or uh, uh, stopped. And we don't want those things to be actually happening, at least in the sun or the innovation COE that we have actually established. And uh, as a result, which also means that uh, when you are discussing with the leadership, uh, we need to make sure that the leaders truly understand that this is going to be a long-term kind of an impacting rather than as a short-term, hey, I gave you $100 and uh, it is one month since I gave you what did you produce, right? Innovation and the kind of the culture of the innovation is more like an art. 
Uh, it, uh, it is, is not, not an mathematical equation, equation that, that you can, can actually sit down and uh, just click uh, quickly, quickly compute to say a right answer and the answer is actually is common and is also the same standard across all the GCCs. No, uh, the, the innovation is more like an art. I mean, uh, you need to give them the time to nourish. You need to give them the time to actually flourish, uh, which means that it cannot be uh, directly measured under the clock. And, and the, the local, local leaders, leaders, as I mentioned, uh, needs, needs to have, have this uh, huge risk appetite. Uh, uh, make sure that they're always uh, sitting at the edge of the seat, uh, making sure that they're uh, ready to push the envelope, um, ready to think like a venture capitalist, uh, as I was actually talking a few minutes ago. Right. So those are the most important things that the local leadership should also have with a lot of good, diverse background individuals uh, being surrounded uh, in, uh, in each of the teams, each of the product lines. I think these, these are some fundamental things, but there are also a few other things that uh, that are also extremely important, important right? Uh, once, once you actually start, start upon uh, doing these things, things, we need to really make sure that we have a great internal branding that actually we do. I mean, until and unless you actually work on these things and you don't publicize the kind of the cool work or the technology or the disruption that you are working upon, the parent organization that is sitting, say, 10,000 or 15,000 kilometers from you might not really know uh, on the, the nitty-gritty details, details in terms of what exactly you are doing and how you are trying to disrupt. So we need to have a little branding, little marketing, little promotional uh, uh, kind of uh, initiatives for us to actually kind of publicize what we are actually doing to the worldwide, uh, including the internal, including the external. And uh, one another thing is benchmark, benchmark, benchmark. I mean, the GCC is as they are evolving. If I'm in the level zero, zero of my imperative or my goal has to be, how can I move to the level one in the next one year or two years? So if I'm already in level one, how should I move into the level two? How, if I'm already in level two, how should I move into the level three? I think they need to benchmark against some of the industry's best GCCs. As a result, they will be continue to push that uh, bar on themselves and actually uh, continue to progress to the right. Then one another thing is that I think like a startup company. Right, more all, all the all the all the leaders are on the call are from the GCC, so which are established uh, multinational organizations. But one thing is that you need to think like a startup under the safety net of a multinational companies, where the processes are defined, the ethics are defined, uh, the support is well defined. People don't need to worry whether I will have the funding for tomorrow. People don't need to really worry about will I have my job tomorrow. So that is the kind of uh, you know the GCC has this. Uh, uh, best, best kind, kind of an opportunity where they, they can think, think like a startup with over 16,000 startups that we have. We can actually take a look into them, how they operate. I'm working for a multinational company. As a result, we can actually get the best of these two worlds and then operate on the needle for the innovation. And finally, as my president says, remain humble, but at the same time, be hungry, right? Humble, hungry, humble, hungry. And, and that, that is how we continue, continue to actually make, make sure that we build a great GCC that will long lasting for our parent organization and make the maximum impact. And innovation is the only way we'll be in a position to actually do that. With that, I really wish all the GCCs and all the leaders on this call all the very best in their innovation journey. And thanks once again, uh, Economic Times, for inviting me. Thanks again. Take care and bye bye.